of him to protect him as well as he can buzz to take away the wide receiver routes and the inside routes by the tight end or the crossing patterns. And in the Jeff Fisher system, the linebackers have to have this ability because they love to take away the in-breaking routes from the wide receivers. And when you look at Javon Curse's ability, he is a kind of a Lawrence Taylor type of football player. He can get after the quarterback, he can get back in pass coverage, and the people I spoke around the league, Mark, they love this guy's athleticism. Of course, Javon Curse, a guy that's played both free and strong safety at one point or another. His coverage skills are second to none. He is going to be a good, good product for the new Tennessee Titans. Well, Seattle is on the clock. Mike Holmgren going to make his first pick. We'll be back with more after this. Welcome to Taco Night at the Andersons. Taco Night is also movie night at the Andersons. Get a coupon for a free blockbuster video when you bring home the new grande meal from Taco Bell. It's a mountain of food for just $9.99. One, two, three, blockbuster! Wow, let's make s'mores. Until next time. Starting a small business takes a burning entrepreneurial spirit, a singular, bold vision, the courage to fight an endless uphill battle. But that's not all you need. Oh, no. We need some furniture. And some curtains would be nice. That's why you need the Visa Business Card, because Jules sells her furniture like millions of other places. Doesn't take any card from American Express. I love these chairs. And I'm really happy with these window treatments. What? Visa Business Card. It's everywhere you want to be. It began as the product of meticulous Japanese design, but it was sent to Europe for finishing school. It was tested on Austria's Alpine roads, refined on Germany's autobahns, and chased on England's racetracks. Now the car that's proven itself in Europe is crossing the pond. Introducing the all-new 99 Infiniti G20. Born in Japan, educated in Europe, now available in America. Body Pain 500 tomorrow at 1, NASCAR on ESPN. The 99 NFL Draft live on ESPN and ESPN2. Join the ESPN NFL Draft team for all the picks, plus live reports from inside the war rooms. The 99 NFL Draft, the players, the teams, the future, continues tomorrow at 11 and 1. Back in New York as the Seattle Seahawks are on the clock, the most intriguing team going into this season. We'll elaborate that in a moment, but let's go back to the Tennessee Titans pick of Javon Kurtz with our sprint video conference and the general manager of the newly named Titans, Floyd Reese. And, and Floyd, thank you for joining us. Javon Kurtz, do you put him at, at defensive end? And if so, what happens to who's, let's say, at right defensive end, Kenny Holmes? What do you project Kurtz to play for you? Well, I think right now he'll come in and start as a as an outside rush guy. One of the unique things about our scheme, of course, is that he can move back and forth. That is, he can line up on the left and the right and stay in a single position, but play both sides. So we don't necessarily need to lock him down in one spot. Uh, the important thing is that he needs some pressure. He can give us some pressure and get to the quarterback. That's what we're looking for. Floyd, you've been the nomads, really, of the NFL, and I'm not looking for you to make an excuse, but now you have a new home, a new stadium, where you're going to play all your games. Do you think that that will give the team kind of a little extra juice, a little make you finally play up to the potential that you and Jeff Fisher have for this ball club? I, I would really like to think so. It's been forever, as you well know. We've, we've bounced around from place to place. We now have a brand new facility, brand new stadium, brand new uniforms, brand new names. I mean, everything is on the up and up. And I think for the first time in the last couple of years, the only thing we have to worry about is winning. Steve McNair, is this a, I don't want to say make or break year, Floyd, for him, but is it time? If you're going to make the move, he's got to be at the forefront. What do you expect out of him this year that you haven't seen yet? We expect to get the same improvement we got last year. He has, he's, you know, he hasn't gone off the charts. He hasn't skyrocketed, but he hasn't dropped at all. Every year he's continued to improve, continued to improve, and as long as he continues to do that, we'll be in great shape. So uh, from our standpoint, if he just continues doing what he did last year, pick up a few things, throw the deep ball a little bit better, things like that, we'll be in great shape. New home, new unis, new name, maybe 
playoff run. Good luck to you, Floyd. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Now, new era in Tennessee, and uh, we shall see if they're an 8-8 eight eight team that makes a move. I can tell you an 8-8 eight eight team that's going to make a move. It's the Seattle Seahawks. Starting with the top, new executive vice president slash GM slash coach of the Seattle Seahawks, Mike Holmgren. There is no question that Mike and many of his staff at Green Bay, remember when they took over the Packers, that was a franchise that hadn't been in the playoffs when they came there in 92 in about 10 years. And the Seattle Seahawks, who have not been in the playoffs since 1988, back when Chuck Knox was up there, while you say, well, gee, they must not be a good team, they have, I don't think there's any question, Joe, in my mind, of all the non-playoff teams, the best personnel of anyone, and frankly, they had better personnel than some of the teams that made the playoffs. They really year. did, Chris. I think I think the area really where he's got an awful lot of help is on the defensive side of the ball. He just has some great athletes. Cortez Kennedy is over there. They've got Sam Adams, who they expect to play well. You bring in a Chad Brown. You've got Sean Springs. The list goes on and on and on of pro bowlers and guys that have been to the pro bowl who can help on the defensive side of the ball. I think the big thing here is what can you do to compliment Joey Galloway? John Kitna has proven to Mike Holmgren he's good enough to be able to play the quarterback position. Is Mike going to stay right there? That's one of the questions we certainly will have an opportunity to ask him, and he'll answer for us as time goes. I think the pressing need right now is to find a complimentary receiver in the offense that Mike Holmgren wants to run. You can't just feature Joey without having somebody on the other side. First thing that comes to mind in my mind is Antonio Freeman and Robert Brooks. You basically got the one guy. Now you need to go find the other one. Yeah, he knows that, but he may not right now have a player for that value at this spot. So they're entertaining calls. I know Seattle was looking maybe to go down. This would be a spot for someone to move up. Mike Holmgren in the NFL as a head coach after he was offensive coordinator of the San Francisco 49ers under George Seifert and before that offensive assistant under Bill Walsh, 84 and 42. They took over the Packers. They said a team that had not been in the playoffs for a long time. And until the last two years, every year they improved. First year, they just missed the playoffs. Next year, they made the playoffs. Next year, they hosted a home playoff game. Next year, they, they moved on. Pep said San Francisco lost in the championship game. Next year, you know, Super Bowl. Then they came back a little bit and didn't get back to the Super Bowl last year. But he's a builder, but he's got more to deal with in, on this roster than he did when he took over Green Bay. Now, Mel, value only. Seattle keeps the pick. Which kind of guys are they looking at? You look at the value at this point, Chris, it's still the offensive tackles. L.J. Shelton, John Jansen, Aaron Gibson. There hasn't been that major run yet. Ebenezer Ecubon, Damian Woody, center of guard, and Andy Katzenmoyer, of course. And, of course, Patrick Kearney on the heels of Ebenezer Ecubon battling for that top defensive end spot all year. Cecil Collins will be interesting to see if Jimmy Johnson moves off of 24 into the early second round. Mike Peterson, a little more consistent than Javon Kirst, but 6'1 and a half, 233. It will be an excellent outside linebacker, probably an early second rounder. Lamar King, an intriguing defensive end with great upside potential. I thought Marcellus Wiley at Columbia two years ago at Buffalo had that intriguing upside potential. Last year, Lorenzo Bromel ended up in the fourth round of Miami. This year, watch out for Lamar King at a Saginaw Valley State. I, I, I think it's what King or Shelton uh, is, uh, are two of the guys that he's looking at now. And I know an offensive, remember, he and Ron Wolf drafted an offensive line one a lot in Green Bay. Uh, House Ballard isn't getting any younger, and that might be a spot that, if he drafted an offensive lineman, that might be a spot. I think so, Chris. And, you know, when you, you mentioned House Ballard, that's what I was looking at. He's a right tackle. Gibson is a right tackle. He's a very big right tackle. And so there's an opportunity for Gibson maybe to play guard or tackle for him. But you look at Walter Jones, Peter Kendall, Kevin Glover, Brian Abib, fairly young across the offensive line. They've done a nice job of piecing in people. And, of course, House Ballard being the veteran there with Chris Gray as your reserve. I still think a big left tackle or right tackle for him in this case would be the right way to go. You mentioned Shelton. You mentioned, I, I think Gibson's a heck of an yeah. intriguing situation here. You say big? Huge. Anthony Gibson is 380. Anthony Gibson, if he's drafted on this team, will make House Fowler look like a shack. <laughs> <laughs> you know? The little but, shack. I mean, it, it, the little shack. But you know why I kind of like Shelton as, as a player? His dad, Lonnie Shelton, NBA player, played on the championship Seattle Supersonics in 1979. You know, a, gen a generation later, his son would go play on a team they hope can win a championship. I like it. Well, he's a good one. He's 6'5 and a half, 341 pounds, Chris. When you look at L.J. Shelton as a junior, protected the blind side of Charlie Batch. And I think as a senior, made great strides, outstanding effort at the senior bowl as well. Well, this is all if Seattle keeps the picket. 
they may 